Hi class, welcome back to Advantage. I'm Matt Fisher, your accounting professor. In today's video, we're gonna go over two different concepts. We're gonna go over margin of safety, which I have on the board right now, and then also we're gonna go over operating leverage, which is a little bit more difficult to understand. So let's first dive into margin of safety. What I have on the board here is the formula. This is for margin of safety in units. You can calculate for sales dollars also. And I'll mention how we do that a little bit later in the video. First of all, margin of safety in units equals expected sales in units minus break even. In a previous video, we went over break even. So in homework problems or on tests, if they have you, if they ask you to calculate margin of safety, the problem more than likely will have to give you the expected sales or give you enough information where you can calculate it. And same thing with break even. They need to either need to tell you what the break even is, or they'll give you enough information so that you can calculate that break even. So let's look at an example here. Let's assume that uh, our expected sales are 12,000 soccer balls. That's what we're expecting to sell. So, and let's say if previously we calculated our break even point where we didn't have any profit or any loss, our break even was 10,000. So you can see this is pretty simple. If we have expected sales of 12,000 and our break even is 10,000, then we have a margin of safety of 2,000 soccer balls. Meaning our sales can drop by 2,000 and we'll still be okay. We'll still at least break even. We're not gonna have a loss. But if we drop 2,001, then we'll have a loss. All right, so that's margin of safety. Sometimes problems ask you to calculate margin of safety in sales dollars. Well, all you need to do is multiply these by the sales price. So if the sales price were $20 per soccer ball, then you take this times $20 and this times $20, subtract that and you get your margin of safety in sales dollars. I'm not gonna go through that, that's pretty simple. All right, now let me erase this board and then we'll start talking about operating leverage. Now I have a new example on the board. We have the equation for operating leverage factor. And this equation is contribution margin. Now I've abbreviated here. Contribution margin divided by operating income. So now let's take a look at this example that I have on the board over here. We've got sales of 800,000, variable costs, VC variable costs are 400,000. So when we subtract that, we get a contribution margin of 400,000. In this example, my fixed costs are 300,000. So my operating income is 100,000. We now have enough information to calculate our operating leverage factor. Contribution margin, 400,000, divided by our operating income, right there, of 100,000, gives us this number four. That's our operating leverage factor. Now let me explain what this number tells us. It's telling us how responsive our operating income is to changes in sales. You might have to think about that, all right? Look at the notes. You can probably need to go through this a few times. But basically what it's saying is, for every percentage change, that we have, whether it's going up or down, whatever percentage change we have in sales, our operating income will change four times that amount since our operating leverage factor is four. Okay, like I said, you're probably gonna have to really think about this. All right, it makes perfect sense, but you just kinda gotta go through examples of it and think what are they really doing here? So let's do an example where we have a 10% change. So this, is a operating leverage factor of four. Now I'm gonna erase this. And what happens then if our sales were to increase, I'm gonna do an up arrow, increase 10%. Okay, well if, if sales increase 10%, 10% of this is 80,000, so an increase would be to 880,000. Variable cost would also go up 10%. If sales go up 10%, variable costs are variable. They change in proportion to the sales. So this will go up 10%, which is 40,000. So we've got 440,000. 
Our contribution margin then will be the difference between these two. So 880 minus the 440 gets us a contribution margin of 440,000. Our fixed costs, what's gonna happen to those? Fixed costs don't change. If we're staying in the relevant range, which we are going to, then fixed costs will not change. So they would be 300,000. So notice our operating income now is for 140,000. Okay. Our change was 10%. If you remember, our operating leverage factor was four. We calculated that to be four. 400,000 divided by 100,000 got us four. Four times the change in sales gets us a 40% change in operating income. And you can see that 40% of 100,000 is 40,000. So our operating income went up by 40,000, 40%, because we had an operating leverage factor of four and sales went up 10%. For high operating leverage companies, that means companies that have lots of fixed costs, right? They're gonna have a higher operating leverage factor which is good if sales are going up. But think about this, what if sales go down? All right, I think you know. If sales were to decrease by five, five percent, then four times five percent would give us a 20% decrease in operating income, right? So you gotta be careful with this operating leverage. It's great for high operating leverage companies if sales are going up, but if sales go down, then that's not so good, all right? If this company didn't have any fixed costs or very little, then we'd say it's a low operating leverage company. And then their factor is gonna be a very small number, maybe one, okay? One or you know, maybe a little bit over one, one, okay? So you might wanna try some examples of that. Try an example of where the operating leverage is uh, a low number, like maybe take fix class out completely and run through those on your own. All right? All right, class, I hope this has helped. Once again, we've gone over uh, margin of safety, operating leverage factor in this video. Like I recommend often, you need to look at your textbook, look at your notes, and probably watch these videos again to get a really good understanding of this information. Good luck, class, and I hope to see you again soon in another Advantage video.